Welcome back, everyone, to the Star Ladder and I League Star Series Season 3. We're onwards to the fourth match of the day. We have six today. I'm Noxious. With me is, of course, still uh, Lothar. We've been casting for quite a while now. We've had some very long series today, very much yeah. of the control meta. Yeah, something very different from your last cast with Firebad when he did uh, make, I think, five matches in two and a half hours. Something like that. It felt like we had a series, a best of five, that lasted ten minutes. Uh, you know, just just to put it into context, the, the the recent best of five we just had was about an hour and ten, I think. Yes. Um, which is just to you know contextualize the differences in types of decks that we're seeing today. Next up on the matches is going to be Super JJ versus Stan Sivka. Super JJ, a player who's been performing extremely well over the past two years, has started to get uh, sick results, and is just coming back from a trip to China. Stan Sivka as well did the same thing. Um, they're both playing Purify Priest in the event, uh, or at least in the, the league right now. Uh, it's a deck that some people think is just the best deck. Uh, and I, I was surprised to hear that, but they just say that, you know, if it beats uh, aggro and if people ban other decks than Purify Priest, then the only deck that's left that's powerful against control is Purify Priest. So it basically never gets banned. It always goes through, and it has the highest win rate of the remaining ones, which kind of blew my mind. Um, it is interesting, to say the least. And we're starting already. But first, there's the chair versus Stansivka. Uh, the chair plays Paladin. How do you say chair in German? Because that can't be right. You can't Stuhl. just say chair. Stool. Then it's probably the stool versus Stansivka. Stool. 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 I'm almost like Stan. Anyway. Stool or JJ versus... <laughs> Stan Sivka, fight! All right, what are they fighting? They're fighting for the glory of the Murlocs, I guess, at this point. Because the um, Super JJ is just playing mid-range Paladin like just about every other contestant that's brought it today. We saw a show with the unique kind of control Paladin, and I thought Stan Sivka would bring Stellar. Um, but he chose a, a slightly different lineup, more on the mid rangey side as well. So we should see that come out of Stan Sivka as well during the series that we have here. Fortunately for JJ, Norton won Murloc, so he was he was pushed to play the Hunter on turn 2 without any any real reason, just at a 2-3, so he has more synergy on turn 3 with either or, with either of his, his war leader or the second Hunter. So fortunately for him, he has an answer to the Mana Tide. And we will not see the repetition of, of the previous match, where Super JJ was playing against... Um, who was it? Super JJ against... My Colento, God. when they yes, just yeah, Colento. it was it was Colento playing his own uh, shaman deck. Yeah, exactly. And Colento did draw like ten cards out of the Manatite potion. Yeah, uh, Manatite totem. So definitely, good start for JJ now when he got some value. I mean, he got what? some tempo, not card advantage yet. Yeah, it's one of the big problems though with the the matchup that Stan Sivka's elemental shaman, or, you know, elemental jade shaman, is extremely well positioned against Murloc decks just because of the amount of power that Devolve removes from the board. You know, they try to set up these Spike Ritz Ds, they try to set up these Tyrions, they try to set up those massive Murloc Megasaur setups, and you're just like, yeah, Devolve everything, and everything just phase out. And suddenly the Paladin is left with a bunch of janky minions that oftentimes have zero synergy, and he's trying to chip in some damage, and you're just denying it. So it's very difficult for the Paladin to come back um, after a Devolve, and it takes a few turns to climb back into the game, and at that point, the Shaman just does it again. And uh, it's back to square one for that Paladin deck. Yep, exactly. But now, two totems are dead because of the synergy with, with the Murlocs. Uh, but still a decent decent options for Stan Sivka, actually, when you think about it. Here's time, which is even weirder uh, in this matchup. I feel like Stan Sivka benefit is being benefited from the late game more than the Paladin, which you usually see, right? Paladin wants to get to the late game, Paladin at least later mid game, uh, to benefit from cards like Finja, cards like um, like Megazor. But at the same time, Stansif will be happy when he goes to the late game because he will have access to bigger, better minions like the Fire Elemental, like uh, Kalimos. Although we don't know if he plays actually Servant of, of Kalimos in this deck. We did see Colento not played at all. So it might be the case that Stan Sivka doesn't play it as well, because he plays the same tech with Double Devolve. But at the same time, Devolve sure. seems like a very good tech 
in the current meta game because everyone plays Paladin and uh, everyone plays what else? What does good priest as well, right? Devolvers against priests is perfect, right? Yeah, it really shuts down Purify Priest specifically, uh, and even Dragon Priest with big buffs. So I wouldn't be surprised if this were just kind of a like a standard elemental shaman. Um, however, like I haven't seen too many people deviate from that line. I noticed Stan Sifka for the prelims ended up submitting a a spirit echo deck with you know just the jade package and no elementals basically. But mm -hmm. this is definitely more of the elemental deck that we've seen in pilot. A lot more people have been kind of favoring this shaman style. Uh, as it really lets you fight for board nicely. The initial versions that we saw, I remember when they came out, did not run Flame Tongue, and that was just weird. Uh, like they played Fireflies, and they played um, Jade Claws, but they didn't play Flame Tongue Totem, which was just kind of odd. And yeah, now that they they've kind of settled here on these lists, usually you tend to see the Totem package sprinkled in. I agree about the Flame Tongue Totem, especially since uh, we talked about fi uh, the Firefly synergy with the Flame Tongue Totem, right? It's just like a cherry on top, so definitely that was weird that no one played that. Alright, well, for now, JG is still a little bit ahead, but it's going harder and harder for him right now. The Pyromancer and Consecration will help a little bit, but at the same time he doesn't have any, like, the synergy is just not there. The yeah, it's a deck that's very reliant on it, and they yeah. don't fight it, they just fall apart. Hmm. hmm. Like, the wall leader has no synergy with the hand. There's not one Murloc left, it will be most likely dead next turn. Um, one turn away from the Primordial Drake, which will, of course will be a very important card in this matchup because of the fact that it kills the totems. Uh, it is the standard totems. But he has three cards that are synergetic uh, with each other, which is Pyromancer, Consecration, and Equality. But at the same time, you don't want to play them when your opponent is not, like, super ahead. So this is a really weird, weird situation. That's kind of the strength of Shaman as well, is that they will make you feel threatened and under pressure, even though they're not that further ahead of you. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the existence of Flame Tongue is like this two-mana card that single-handedly kills you, even if they have nothing but Hero Power Totems on the board. So you're always under pressure, even with very little input from the Shaman. Um, and so that that kind of control package that JJ sprinkled in his mid-range Paladin is all the useful in some matchups, like in the Mirror Match, where you're able to just capitalize on cleaning up what they have. In this case, it's a little bit of a drawback, where it's not guaranteed to bring you back into the game. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Although, he did, um, uh, Stansivka did play one Flame Tongue Totem already. But it still does the possibility of the second one, and that is super awkward. So now Super JJ needs to take care of the board ASAP. Yeah, and he's gonna commit the Consecration here, given that he's already got the Pyro Equality in case things go bad. He's also got the Primordial Drake, alright? That's basically a Consecration, so no reason to hold on to one of those effects, as uh, usually you'll be able to use whatever you've got in hand to, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. to accomplish the same task over time. And these Murlocs are just getting shut down one after the other. Equality now? Yikes. I mean, you could just play the Drake and kill everything. It's clean enough yeah. because the you're forcing, you know, something like a Hex on a non-Tyrion target, which is a good news, usually. And if you're not forcing the Hex, then you're at least dominating the board with a 4 aid that trades nicely into everything. That's a good turn, I would say. Although, I was thinking maybe just Hex and Mana Tide Totem this turn. And then Hero Power. Get that value rolling, you know. You have two devolves, so you 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 have the ways to play around the Ragnaros. You have to play around the Tyrion. Okay, so he just doesn't want to kill it. He just gives the Stonehold Defender for free. Okay, that makes sense as well. Yeah, he's protecting it behind the Manatide, which kind of acts like a, a hex in this case. Like the one four kind of acts like that, and he's just trying to set up like the biggest devolve possible. There are some cases where you double devolve against Paladin, but it's not that common. It's when you whiff on the first one really, really badly. Oh, that's interesting. 
We got the Sunkeeper and the Dirty Rat. We can deny Calamo's value. I'll just get wrecked by pulling out white eyes. <laughs> or, you know, Earth Elemental when the Stonehill Defender is discovering it. Yeah, you do sometimes get wrecked. Uh, it's not bad when you've got Equality Pyro, though. So that's what he's looking at right now. He's thinking, I can take Sunkeeper, but I'd need to be ahead in minion count to make it work. Mm -hmm. And with the existence of Maelstrom Portal and Storm, it's not bloody likely I I'll stay ahead for long. So, hence the hesitation. All right. And now we're just going for the maximum minion count on JJ's side, trying to set up that Sunkeeper terrain. We're not even hiding from it. We're basically, te you know, sending a big telegraph here. What do I think about Devolve here in this situation? Hmm. I mean, the awkward. question is, do you, you might... really need it yet? Like, you can probably wait an extra turn and wait for him to go for that Tareem, unless you die. Because once you devolve post Tareem, you're debuffing everything as well. And, you know, creating a 7-drop with that Primordial Drake and a 2-drop is possibly better than that 1-4. I'm not a huge fan of the, of the devolve just yet. There's also a possibility of just playing... Kalimos with Devolve, but he, he doesn't have an elemental to make the synergy work. So that's a problem. Yeah, he's digging really hard in this deck, though. That Manatide Totem is still protected behind the, the Wall of Taunt at this point, so that's already two cards. I feel like Manatide is just wrecking JJ whenever it shows up. Mm hmm. Just completely shuts him out. Whenever he's looking to get equal on the board, then he just keeps drawing and drawing for that Shaman. Well, he did kill one in the beginning of the game. I'll give it that. Better than losing to it like last game, but now JJ's going to have to look at this and figure out what he wants to do because I'm looking at the board states and like JJ has to commit so much to get so little done. Hmm. No trades are good. That 4-7 lines up horribly yep. against everything his opponent's doing. And he has no single spell to just play the Pyromancer. And the good thing about the Sunkeeper plus War Leader is usually that it makes your minions immune to dying on the trade. But there's a Flame Tongue in the way. So they still die on the trade anyway. And he's, <laughs> he's gonna go for it. He recognizes that he has to handle that Manatide Totem before things get out of hand. They've already gotten out of hand. They've already yeah, gotten exactly. Out of hand, so. <laughs> Look at that. 5-3 uh, uh, Earth Elemental. Uh, sorry, Air Power. Air Sounds Elemental about balanced. Totem. Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> Air Elemental Totem, please no. Save me. Oh, that's not bad. Oh, that's, that's not bad. Still lacks one damage on that uh, Jade Lightning, though. You could so always Jade it's Claws, I guess. slightly awkward. And here Second we go. Devolve. Woo! As I said, sometimes you double devolve because you whiffed on the first one. It's not that common, but when it happens, you, you feel a little bit awful. Unless, of course, you've got a Hex in your back pocket, just like Stan Sifka does right now. So feeling confident he can handle Tyrion's, he's going to move forward with the double devolve. Makes sense. And his opponent is at 13 HP. This is not looking great. Fortunately for JJ, there's a re rescue button, a quality to reset the board, and the Harrison just to get some card advantage back. So looking good, and if I'm not mistaken, Sansifka has no synergy for Kalimos this this turn. Not yet, no, and Spirit Echo oh is my no help. God. Spirit Echo is absolutely no help. Against Paladins, this is oftentimes a fine play. But Sunkeeper Tareem was discovered, I believe, from the Stonehill Defender. So there is still one natural one in the deck. And now the Murlocs are coming out, and Stan has got no AoE in hand. Could play a Volcano in this list. Definitely not out of the out of question, but... Two Devolves are gone. These Murlocs are gonna stick. Yeah. These Murlocs are just gonna stick. I don't know. I don't know about that Kanimos, man. Not sure about it. I think with Spirit Echo it's okay. 
Because it would have to die now for that to be a misplay. And the odds that the Paladin kills it means that he's committing that Harrison Jones into a trade. I think the, the play was fine. I mean, Spirit Echo is not going to find much more value without Servants, without things from below. So the fact that you can get yourself a second wave, uh, or a second chance at Calamo as a Primal Lord off is definitely good. And now we Divine Shield. Feels awkward. Ha! Okay. That's a draw. Okay. Now well, that... Well, the Spirit Echo seems decent. My god. What a draw. White Eyes from a Stonehill Defender. And the Spirit Echo comes in and solidifies the power of that guy. There's going to have to be a second Megasaur in Super JJ's lineup with Poisonous here. Otherwise, this threatens to go downhill really fast. Truce of a Champion doesn't really help that much. If you sacrifice two five attack minions, you can push for three damage to the face, play the Truce of a Champion. That's about it. Or trade the 2 2 and the Truce of a Champion, kill the 7 6. But that still means your opponent will have the 10 10 back next turn. So you need to get the second equality? Or did he use already two? Or Gentle Megasaur with Poisonous, I think that can save you. Because keep in mind the Kalimos still doesn't have any synergy on it, right? Yes. So it is still just a measly little 7 6 that does nothing. But um, next turn, he will not play Kalimos anyway. Even if right. he will die. So he would have to find like at least one elemental to go with the Storm Guardian. Mm hmm. So there's still a chance for JJ to pick up uh, Gentle Megasaur number two. Uh, it's, it's doable. It's going to take some luck, but. What Hearthstone's all about. Ah, don't be so. No. Negative about the game. Oh, it's not negative. He just needs to, to get lucky when it matters, and it's mattering right now. Oh, that's correct. He needs that additional pressure and a top deck to get out of this mess. I mean, to be fair, if he picks up the poisonous, that's just gonna swing the game back in his favor wildly. Oh! Ooh. Oh. Wait, wait, wait. He should have played the healing totem first. Mistake! It's alright. He's gonna get patches anyway. Oh, boar. No. That could have made the, the, the difference. The Pyromancer would have been dead. Depends on Poisonous, you know, to put it that way. General Megasaur with Poisonous could be a big deal. Stonehill Defender can't help with Sunkeeper to Reem, but he picks up complete air. Garbage. Trash. Brutal. Savage. Savage. Red. Warlock. This guy just got... He just got trolled by the Stonehill Defender. Hmm. That Stonehill Defender was awful. Yeah. So he's not dead on board for now from his perspective. But we well know that this Hex is going to seal the deal. As the 10 damage will get to connect the face, and Stan Sivka will take the first game of the series. And a favored matchup, granted, but still came a lot closer than I had anticipated. That 10 10 off the draw was nuts. Yeah, the random, random wide eyes. What the hell? I thought that's his cup. <laughs> Typical Stan Sivka things. I'm drinking off of a pitcher. No problem. <laughs> Uh. All right, so Stan Sifka with the Purify Priest and the Paladin left is going to have to win with both of these going forward. The Priest is not exactly the deck I, I want to pitch into any of these um, as of right now if I'm the Priest player. I mean, you have a bad matchup uh, against any Paladin, and you probably don't want to run into that um, Elemental Shaman all that much. So, yeah, th that Priest is not feeling particularly... Good to either player right now. That's correct. But it's Paladin versus Paladin. We have seen this a lot today. Brace yourselves. <laughs> it, it might take some time. Brace yourselves and fish up. There's a lot of Murlocs. It looks like none of the players have a blowout opener this time yeah, around. Yeah, there's the Vilefin. Although Stansifka is playing um, the Blessing of Kings, which will make a difference here, especially with cards of Redemption. I like Redemption when you play more buffs, because they allow you to play the buffs on curve. 
Like turn three, you play Redemption, and you will always probably always have a minion still on turn four to play the Blessing of Kings. In this case, this might be one of the things that make you a hand on board. Although in this matchup, um, there's a Peacekeeper, just you know, in the, in the matchup for for both players. So any buff, any huge buff can actually be mitigated. But Stensivka did opt for the Gateway Kodo. Makes sense as well because two battle crime minions will give him value. I mean, this is one of these cases where the control package we see in JJ's hand with the pyro equality is helping a little bit in the mirror match. It's bad when they have war leader, but you can find spots to make use of it anyway when they're you know getting that second wave or third wave of murlocs. Mm -hmm. um, that can definitely pull you back ahead. So we'll come, we'll see it come in handy at some point, but I don't know how early he has to pull the trigger on it. Because the longer you wait, the more likely it is that War Leader gets picked up. So it's going to be like on a refill board from Stan Sivka. Should sit in the hand for a long time for JJ. Follow the rule. That's the Peacekeeper already like that. That means one thing. That your opponent already has the second one, or he just has absolute trash in his hand. So... How does the Blessing of Kings look right now? And I think, I think it looks great. The thing is, if you put it on the Hydrologist and you know, let's say there's a kill on it afterwards, then you get it back with Getaway Kodo. So you're pretty happy about the outcome. If you get the Rockpool Hunter back, you're probably okay with it too. Um, is there ever a world in which you just threw a Silver Champion instead, just to make sure that you already have the weapon developed for the following turn? I think it's really just about keeping yourself ahead with the true silver and kind of protecting your minions. Well, the tempo swing for turn 5, yes, might be the case as well. Because you guarantee additional 4 damage for the next turn. Right. In a different decent source. Removal piece. Yeah. Of course, we know that in this matchup, players have been... Today, it seems like Harrison Jones is just making a comeback. There's always the chance you get blown out by the Harrison Jones at the right time, but we've got answers to it. It's not too bad. War leader into redemption. Let's go. Let's get crazy. Oh man, JJ is gonna have to time that equality pyro perfectly to do anything with it. Before a war leader comes down. That's another thing. I mean, I guess you could always go Pyro Equality into Coin, you know, um, I mean, sorry, Pyro Coin on, like, the smaller Murlocs, if you have enough spells played, that can work. If you play the Pyro over two turns, you can always weaken the minions twice, but the issue is oftentimes when War Leader is set up on the board, you're just dying if you wait one turn. If they already have a full board, that you would Equality, that's kind of, it's kind of gimmicky. Mm-hmm. Funny when we actually watch Paladins versus Paladins, every single turn they're awkward for both players. Yeah, but that's usually what it comes down to because I feel like people have been teching their mid range value more and more. And the more tech cards, the more quote unquote dead draws you end up with. And that's why you end up with like hands that have Harrison Jones, Equality, Pyro. And you're looking at this, you know, there's a secret left over from Hydrologist. And none of these on their own make any sense. So then you have to wait for your draws to line up and then finally get a, a good turn going. It's That's why people are looking for their you know, power cards. They're looking for that crazy, um, you know, Finja. That's why they keep it off the mulligan. It just creates these winning spots that don't force you into the awkwardness of having to come up with a plan that's just funky. Man, that... Uh... Right. Is someone telegraphing a Tareem here? Might be the case. I also like like the Valfin consider in this matchup. When you play it on turn one, every single hero power is relevant. Like it's so important to take off those Murlocs off your off your opponent's board. Should I hmm. Hmm. And now JJ is, is again in a pickle. What do I do with this board? It doesn't feel great. I can use Pyromancer equality. But then after that, there's nothing. Like there's there's literally no good way. What what about uh, no no good way to develop the board? Pyromancer coin deals with three minions, and I feel like that's enough. You can go Pyromancer, Pyromancer Redemption, Redemption Hero Power. Sure. Probably the I best think... option here. 
I think that's the best because it puts down the most pressure and it also keeps your board alive for the following turn. Um, I mean, if you get your pyro back, then you get a decent equality turn. Sometimes equality is live just by virtue of you having the the one ones on the board. Um, so I don't mind, you know, any of the lines of play that are offered to him. Oh, that's a good point, actually. The Murloc body is worth quite a bit. It can test the two on the board, and more importantly, it also sets up a good Megasaur. Uh, if that's something, it's more likely to live, so you might have a spike with Steed target. It's also good to play around the Tarim, right, from your opponent's side. Let me think. So that's definitely a good point to play it. Yeah, I like it as well. All right, let's see what will Stansifka do. This blessing of kings is actually relevant. After your opponent did play, um did play one uh what was it one one peacekeeper and one equality yep. no he has still two equality so one peacekeeper one peacekeeper so that the odds of him having the answer in the form of a peacekeeper here are pretty slim so it's mostly going to be like a truth over champion which on its own doesn't buy tempo it's mostly going to be like a protection play for your minions and so that's okay if he ends up truth overing this then you can just develop hydrologist that you got back from the getaway kodo and resume flooding the board and the big edge goes to stan sifka because his hero power is spawning Murlocs, and Super JJ's isn't. Oh, that's a decent steed. Hmm. I mean, you can trade your Pyro away. That's interesting. You get a 2-6, though. I mean, is that... How much is that worth? I'm, I'm really interested in the fact that he did not kill the Pyromancer. Because it gives your opponent an out with the quality in case he really needs to kill that minion, right? Sure. All right. Uh, I feel like that you're opening up equality for him, and maybe he thought there was no equality there because he would have played it earlier. Little does he know, man, JJ's hand contains absolutely nothing. Like, double equality and coin, those are the three worst cards he could have right now. They're yes, decent insurance for the future. 13 mana in five cards. 13 yeah. mana in five cards. There's more mana in two cards in Sensifka's hand right now. Yeah, there's just a bunch of... Useless cards, but out of the Stonehill Defender could come out of play. There's Tyrion, there's the Grime Street Protector, Wicker Flame, Burn Bristle, Sunkeeper, Tareem, name it. These four are usually the prime targets for that stuff. And Rathion. Okay, we could pick up Parmortal Drake and get lucky and keep drawing. That is so that, sad. I've just dropped a Mega Zor like that. <laughs> that Temple Zor. It's just so sad. It's even sadder oh. than Harrison Jones in a matchup when your opponent actually has weapons. Because the Meg Megazor is a win condition. Harrison Jones is like a... Just a little bit of a help. But the, 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 the interesting thing to me is that I think this Megazor was prompted by the presence of Harrison Jones. Where if there wasn't Harrison Jones, then I didn't play Megazor. But because I have Harrison Jones, I can afford to play around Tyrion. Because I'm going to draw three cards anyway. So I'm throwing away a good card and I'm likely to find a second copy of it. So it's one of those cases where Harrison Jones in the hand is making this Megasword play alongside Equality play around Tyrion very nicely. So, we'll see what he opts to do, but I wouldn't be surprised if that were the line of play he opts for. Hmm. Man, this is... This is all awkward. Options. Yeah, we can uh, record it on a tape and play it. Every say that time. every time. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this is awkward. Oh, back Paladin, Paladin to back match. awkward turn. Back to back to uh, back, awkward turn. Back to back, 93, 94. Online uh, gaming community champion. <laughs> <I'm d> <laughs> <laughs> oh man, don't diss. Don't diss the doctor. I must remain I've been watching more of him ever since you introduced him to me. Looks like we're just gonna go for the Rathion. Alright, fair enough. There, we're still not giving that Ashbringer any chance to swing is the way that Super Jade is playing this. We saw him here just set up a, a board that's going to soften up what his opponent has, but more importantly, he's not letting Tyrion die. Um, and until, you know, if Tyrion can't die unless JJ says so, then that means that JJ gets to take the three charges off of it with Harrison Jones. Look at that turn. This is actually not awkward at all. Tyrion into 4-5, 3-2 into 1-1, one, one. hero power Tyrim, and redemption. What do you think about that? 
so Stan Sifka doesn't really value his weapon charges anymore, interestingly enough. Um, he's just trying to set up the biggest Tareem turn. His redemption right now doesn't give him anything too fantastic. Unless Tyrion gets sniped, you know, as the first minion. Because otherwise he's getting the other small stuff, I believe. Mm-hmm. That's kind of... It's kind of weird, but... He's reading into JJ's hand that he doesn't have any removal for the small stuff before Tyrion dies. <sighs> it's not a bad read. Right now, JJ is on the back foot. I don't know if holding up to the Harrison Jones was... Was the way to do this, but... Abomination off of some, you know, Stonehill Defender. Farfetch to move. I mean, I'm not seeing anything fantastic Well, here. you can get Primordial Drake as well, so that's two out of 20 or something. You'd need the mana to play it though, right? Well, yeah, but next turn, you don't die. Yeah, this. next turn you could definitely clean up shop here, that'd be fantastic. I mean, you're letting the Azure Rainer swing with that play, which makes it a bit too slow. You could always just hero power and sunkeeper. Maybe that's like just good enough, but you're giving the Ashbringer some value. The thing is, because he'll swing with Truth Silver first, you assume that you can still get the Ashbringer out. Okay. We're Let's still looking for A bomb. Carbuck is sweet, I can agree. Okay, curator. Sure. Um, Seems good. That's the Drake. The is better Drake than nothing. Come into the hand. Yep. And can also clean up with oh, the equality on turn 10. There it is. Yeah, turn 10 with the Primordial Drake equality. That curator was a blessing from that Stonehill Defender. There aren't too many cards he was looking for at that point. And now it's going to come down to Stan Sifka. Like, does he think that the weapon is going to be used up completely by Harrison Jones? Does he want to, you know, trade Tyrion away and use up a charge first? I feel like or when he, he has redemption, he wants to wait. So just trade away your small stuff. With Sunkeeper, it seems kind of productive, right? Like, Redemption and Sunkeeper Tareem kind of work in opposite ways. Um, yeah, I like this. Yeah, this is probably the strongest play. By far. So I can't remember who was played first. Like, was the Tyrion played first before the other minions? Uh, but 100% sure the Hero Power Murlocs, the Silver Hand Murlocs, were played after Tyrion. But I can't remember if the Hydrologist was played before or after Tyrion. That's the one card I'm not sure about either, is the Hydrologist. Well, we'll see in a second, because, uh... Doesn't really matter anyway, right? Because at the end of the day, like, JJ, whatever he kills, is gonna get value out of his turn. Like, if Tyrion comes back, I mean, it's a bad thing, but at the end of the... He's still fine with it, because he okay, gets it the, was the, the Ashbringer to swing. Yeah, I think Hydrologist and Aldor were both there before the Tyrion. Unlucky. Well, that's giving JJ a huge leg up, though, in the match, because suddenly he's back into it. He wasn't looking particularly bright, like, the the future of uh, JJ, but then the Stonehill Defender into Curator, into a refill, into the board clear, into a potential of Harrison Jones. Um, that was pretty crazy. The problem with the Harrison Jones is that you don't play any Tom Minions. You could play any Hydrologist to stall a little bit longer, I guess. Ooh, Pyro Equality well, into Harrison Jones if you want that to helps. go crazy. That helps, and we have seen exactly the same board uh, in previous match, and Sho didn't make the call to go for the Equality Pyromancer to clean up the, um, the Finja. We'll see if Super JJ actually makes the call. It's pretty tough to make, I think, in that spot, because you can always draw first to check whether or not you can pick up... Um, you know, another play that's a little bit less wasteful, because it does feel a bit wasteful. Man, that's just so tough. Or maybe maybe the secret is just good enough, because Noble Sack is okay. Just ever heals you. There's a lot of plays that just mitigate the amount of Murlocs on the board. So you're only dead to what? Like Megasaur? Are you even dead to that? Like double Megasaur? Megasaur, Wind Fury, no, that's 8 damage, so what's on one of? It would have to be double Megasaur or something, or like, Wall Eater Megasaur. Um, then you bring out more Murlocs. Yeah, you still have the Wild Pyro Equality though, so you're probably... Exactly. Hmm. What an interesting turn. Let me that's a good steed. 
Yes, it's. I think like this seed is uh, the best way of making a comeback after your opponent did Harrison Jones you because even if it, it will be an a quality a quality pyromancer, you will be left with the two six seed, and that is crucial when your opponent is getting low on health. And honestly, if you've got the War Leader too, they got decent protection against that equality, as we mentioned earlier. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Sort of just shuts them down. And if you pick up a War Leader off the draw, oh, the then you leader. don't even need to play the one in your hand, and you're setting up the most possible burst for the following turn. All right, well, this looks great. Let's see what JJ will do. Uh-oh. So, Tareem... Tarine right now, not with a big two minions. I mean, it ruins your uh, the opponent's war leader gets good because of it, but you're at least you're nullifying the Finja. Wild Pyro, Consec, Equality, but the issue with that is you're then left with a Stegodon. Yeah, the Stegodon Which... is such a pain in the. You know, but at least you live, that. right? At least you live if you go Wild Pyro, Consec into Equality. Hmm. I mean, you can open up with, with Equality first, sorry. You go Equality, and then you trade, and then you go Wild Pyro, Consec for the full clear. Is that correct? It would be, but he doesn't yeah. go for it. You kind of don't need the to use the pyro, but you're doing. I mean, you can keep that secret, I guess, if you want to get the pyro value later. But it's not big from no the matter what. He actually, yeah, I'm actually wondering if if that was the card that he wanted to pick out because uh, pick up uh, because he was running out of time. And he still I'll needed take to play. I'll take health restoration. Anyway. That's fine, right? It's a way yeah. to stay alive. That's true. Hmm. What are the options now? You don't want to play the Drake first because it might be a redemption and it will actually bring up a 5 1 minion. That's not great. He went Oh, but for there's it no anyway. secret on the board yet, right? Oh, he didn't. What I'm talking right, about. Right, it wasn't played yet. So is he still okay? I mean, he's playing. Sunkeeper to Reem kind of sucks, but it's not the end of the world. You're still ahead in that regard. Stansif got trying to monitor how much damage is being pushed by those Murlocs. That would be a 5 attack Murloc. So, there's no real difference between both aside from one makes it so you die to Wild Pyro plus a spell. So if you attack the 3-1, you expose yourself to Wild Pyromancer shenanigans. So attacking the lower attack one is probably correct. Mm -hmm. And that's going to be another way to clear up the board if you want to. Stansifka is running out of way of actually putting pressure on the board. And he did I draw his uh, Tyrion, he didn't draw his uh, Ragnars yet. I... I keep going back to that turn where JJ got Stonehill Defender into Coin Curator. That was the absolute, like that was the pivotal turn I think of the game. Where he finally found a defensive option that kept him alive that one turn. And then let him transition into his own counter pressure. Because without Curator from that Stonehill Defender, he probably had no chance of stalling Stansifka long enough. Yep. I agree. A single Stonehill Defender gave him three cards. That's nuts when you think about it. And he was able to play it in one turn. Oh, is he considering Wild Pyro into Murloc? Like, War Murloc War Leader attack into Wild Pyro with Noble Sack? Oh, looks like it. Interesting. I mean, it usually works. There's almost nothing in Stensive because that can punish you. Weapons don't work. There's only one shoots over left, I believe. So you're forcing him to have Consec or Second Drake. If only this Paladin would have been lower health, then the Eye for an Eye would actually be a game changer. But uh, not this time. That being said, you know, General Megasaur could still play a huge role in this game. There are no more spells likely from that Wild Power Mancer. If you pick up a Divine Shield, it can stall quite a lot. I mean, stealth even works if you've got the War Leader. The Death Rattle would have been better, but still, Divine Shield is not bad. Stealth, as you said, I, I was thinking, like, maybe stealth is even better. 
Yeah, I was thinking stealth is okay because then you at least the problem is your opponent's at eleven, right? With that two server champion, he hasn't played Tyrion. Uh, he hasn't played Sunkeeper, so you know there are taunts left. Gentle Megasaur can give taunt to two Murlocs, so you're not guaranteed for that stealth to be very viable. Whereas fighting for boy with a Vine Shield gives you more longevity in the match. Hmm. So I think this was overall still correct. Noble Sack's still up on JJ's side, by the way. Yeah. So those, uh, those minions don't get a free pass to hit face. What does the Megaz uh, Megazo give? Wind Fury plus free attack and plus one, plus one. Uh, the War Leader can attack this turn. With plus one, plus one, it can actually kill the Megazor. With the Wind Fury, can kill one of the Murlocs. Huh. I mean, the, with Wind Fury, it actually kills a Murloc and stays alive. Right, because you can kill the 1-1. One, one. The smaller one, yes. So you would then have one less guy hitting into your Noble Sack, which is potentially worth quite a bit. I think you still use the Trucifer Champion to kill the, um, the Megazor in this situation. Sure. Seems right. All right, does the setup default for next turn? It's uh, 16, 5, 9, 13, 16, exactly, right? No, it, it does, but now the Ragnaros kind of changes a little bit. Also, there can be the Morlock Ward to played. I think I like it more, especially with those Divine Shields right now. You want to extract value out of those Divine Shields while you can, because they're not going to stick around forever. These little Murlocs are so irrelevant long term. So you're just much better off making this line of play. Um, and it's also making Sunkeeper to ream kind of a dead draw in their deck. Since it's buffing your Murlocs and not his. So you'd have to trade first, then play it. And so he'd be like two minutes ahead on board. And your mm -hmm. Ragnaros can break the stalemate because it's so much bigger than the 3-3s three and the 3-7. Although the World Leader can be killed first and then he can have right, uh, right. good trades. But you're still slightly ahead with the, the Ragnaros, I believe, afterwards. He gets so much health back. He's looking at how much damage really that the War Leader is preventing. I think the most important part is Tareem is not good. Alright. <laughs> Second Curator. First one was from the Stonehill Defender. Well, well, well. That's a decent card. And he's gonna stay ahead on board, as we as we mentioned earlier. The fact that he has a 5-1 minion deck is actually the most important part about this uh, this situation. I mean, after the trade, that was so important. The additional 3-3 is just relevant. That rag is going to have to do a lot of work, but it can. Uh, JJ will at least probably be forced to trade into it, since he doesn't have a setup for lethal just yet. Well, he will trade with the Tyrant. That means the Tyrant will soak another damage from um, from the Ragnaros. So 12 damage is going to the face, and that will set up to turns lethal. So Stan Sifka is not looking really great here. We deal more damage by going face than respecting Rag, because Rag is going to damage itself for 50-50 to self-heal. Yeah, and also he did put additional 6 damage on board. So that's more than enough. Again, we were talking about this earlier, but the equality pyro in JJ's deck, you know, it's an adaptation that you don't see every single time in that mid-range list. Um, usually super helpful, and we saw it come into action a few times during the game, and it just shows that, you know, the typical classic Paladin cards are still, they still have room to be played in those novel decks with the Murloc package. You know, disregarding equality pyro, just because you're not controlled Paladin isn't necessarily the right thing to do. Yep, correct. That's the quality. Well, there's gonna have to be... If Rag heals himself, there's not even lethal, regardless. Twitch chat please isn't coming. Right, so playing the Vilefin Inquisitor doesn't achieve anything here. Your opponent will just cruise in uh, through the taunts and kill it as well. So it'll just soak 3 damage. Is there a way you can actually live? Like 3 damage, 2 and 5. 
Then two, only six damage going through. And you're healing 50%, chances your hero, here we go, gets to 20 HP. So if Stansifka will get to draw Consecration or Primordial Drake, this can still swing to his favor. But he needs that right now, this draw. Let's see. So Jade is calculating how much damage he wants to have these minions take. Because, you know, if you attack with them into the 1-1, one -one, then suddenly you lose more to Consec. Whereas if you take the phase damage on Rag, there's no burst in that deck, so you'll be fine anyway. Yeah, exactly. And I'm a pretty big fan of that line of play. I think it's... probably better. And now Stan Sifka is on the Consec draw. He's on the Drake draw. I think there's one more Primordial Drake left in the Ooh, deck. Ooh, there's a Legendary Creator. Well, it will help a little bit, and it will get the Primordial Drake to his hand. The but question can... is, is he dead? I think he's dead, right? Because Truce of a Champion, plus two minions, that's 3, 6, 9, 12, he lives. 13 damage. <laughs> 13 damage. <laughs> he he's lives! One so I think Creator is the play to send to get the Primordial Drake. I mean, he is guaranteed to get that, right? He didn't play... He played one, if I remember correctly. We might be wrong, and he's played two, but I believe he's played only the one, yes. Well, let's see. These games kind of blend in I... together at some point without the deck tracking on. It's kind of difficult to, p to figure out exactly what the dragon is left in the deck, but I believe there's one left. So Sifka could pick it up. He's trying to get... Uh... The info on what's left. I mean, he needs to play it anyway. Equality doesn't achieve anything here. <sighs> no Primordial Drake. Alright. Well, at least it increased the chances of drawing Consecration. That can still do it. That Rag Light Lord. It's really down to Consec, as we were talking about. I really thought there was another Drake left, so that means that JJ is effectively on the win here, assuming Sifka doesn't pick up Consec. If Sifka does find Consecration, though, this game is... Wide open. Gonna, it, it will have been nothing but a, a series of... of turnarounds. I mean, even picking up... Yeah, you really need to, you literally Consecration. There's no Ivory Knight in the, any of these lists. Those are too fast to include that value generator. JJ has one left, one card left in the deck. So silly. If, if Stan Sivka will actually manage to clean up the, uh, the board right now, he might actually just win. Let's see, what is the draw? Stonehill Defender. Wanted that last turn for that Drake setup. Oh uh, but uh, he will not survive. Tyrion cannot be Cyclopean so Horror has a turn. Uh, Cyclopean Horror has 10 HP. So that's better, essentially, than Sunwalker. And can still squeeze a hero power. I, I, I mean, he, 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 he still has a way of clearing the board, because otherwise he would have already played the equality. Oh, it's gonna be a, a nine health minion, right? Oh, yeah, sorry, so it's there just was six the, yeah, I thought there was seven, but apparently there's only there's only six. So that means he's still alive by a tiny bit. But the last card in JJ's deck, as we well know, uh, was the Tyrion that he hadn't played. Only JJ had played his and lost everything to Harrison Jones. Put your face so if JJ plays around equality consec, then he's just gonna kill off everything that's left on this board, right? Mm-hmm. And that's simply gonna be a lockout, because the Tyrion not dying would mean that, you know, JJ always gets to connect. It seems that way. Well, let's see what is the last draw for Stan Sivka. Well, What almost. a heartbreak! Almost. Wait, wait, he can Murloc into Megasaur into a taunt! Oh, yeah, right! He can do this! He can do it! You are right. Let's see. Come on, taunt up, little Murloc! The Silver Hand recruit that could. Ah, oh, oh, it, it could not. Imagine that, right? Megasaur sticks around, it's a 5 4. Um, JJ's Next, taking uh, JJ three from fatigue. 
But he's taking just he's he'll be one off of death with the fatigue damage that kicks in. Man, that was a close game. I did not. And it anticipate only took this. 45 minutes. Yeah, it's fine. We're not behind on schedule at all. Um, we're totally within. We're totally within schedule. Yep. All right. Well, in this case, um, one one still two priests ahead. Could go by very fast, given the matchups that are coming up. I mean, again, we talked about this, but the Shaman is extremely well-positioned to handle mid-range Paladin. What with all the transformation effects with the Volvin Hex. Um, so usually the, pal the Paladin ends up killing over, like we saw Stansifka win with his Elemental Shaman earlier. Hmm. All right, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Shaman versus Paladin. Devolves will get some value. Well, it's gonna be kind of hard for the, the Paladin to get you know into the game. One of the things too that's funny is uh, the few games we've seen this, the Paladin never really had an explosive opener, so we never really got to see the times where Devolve just creates a bunch of wisps early in the game. Um, we've only seen, you know, games where everything's kind of mid-rangey, it's a devolve mid-game, sometimes double devolve, devolve into lightning storm. Uh, we've never had these boards, like, might be coming up now with, you know, one drop into Rockpool Hunter, into, you know, another, like, Hydrologist, Coin Rockpool, and then the devolve is forced super early. So we'll see what Jade is going to have to handle, but I think that Jade Claws is just... almost always right. I guess it's not right if you anticipate... I think Rock I would 100. rather go for the Stonehill Defender on turn 3, so hero power this sure. turn. Sounds good. And then you can just set up a Jade Claws that way. Okay. I, I think that I, I, I give a lot of value to this 1 1. Just in general. I like the holding of the weapon charge, though. Playing around Rockpool Hunter, you know, not over committing to that one minion. Because you can devolve all that stuff later on. That's true. But this turn is pretty bad. Like, you can't really attack into anything. The Bloodless and Devolve already are kind of tidying up, like, um, tying up your hands. Literally, kind of. Um, because you can't really play those cards yet. They have no value. Yeah. And maybe if Devolve this turn, but it's so horrible. You want to keep that for some crucial minions against the Paladin. Against an effect like uh, like the, the Spike Root Steed. Blessing of Kings, Tarim, um, Tyrion, of course. You're hoping to hit more than just little 1-1s one and 2-1s, but I think you're so favored in the matchup that at the end of the day, what matters the most is that the Paladin simply never gets on the board. Um, wow, that opener by Stan Sifka is insane! Vilefin into Rockpool into Hydrologist Coin Rockpool. I was alluding to how crazy of an opener we could see in the match, and this is, this is one of those. He's just got it. I mean, I guess you could go for Noble Sack and set up a Coin Finja instead, but he's got an embarrassment of options here. And a Noble Sacrifice to play around the weapon. That's nice. Extremely good opener for Stan Sifka. These are the type of openers that could take that Shaman off guard, and we saw the very early Devolve being forced by the pressure coming out of the Paladin. Man, that was, that was unexpectedly fast. Psychotron is not really a good, good minion right now. <laughs> yeah, Psychotron is good, but I think he wants to start hero powering, it seems. I would have probably opted for the Psychotron like you mentioned, but I, JJ probably wants to set up the cost of the thing from below uh, to get lower. It's more flexible to play that way, but... Huh. So he doesn't value the Divine Shield at all. Keeping in mind that you're playing as a Shaman, I feel, feel like... Just killing off the minions as soon as possible is the best choice, but you're tempted to coin out the Finja. It's so powerful, right? Especially if you have the possibility of buffing it up with the Hunter. So when you draw out the War Eaters, you can actually almost always have the Finja for the next turn, and your opponent has to reply to the Finja, you gain value. It's like an infinite circle of, of, of value. Hmm. 
Man, this this meta tide. Is it gonna live again, or are we gonna find a war leader off the draw after all? Ooh, this is getting kind of ridiculous. Meta tide just never dies, it seems, against Paladin. If there's no war leader here, this could just stay up one extra turn. Probably will be. Surely. Though. There it is. All right. So it only happens to Super JJ that he's not able to kill the mana tide totem. I guess so. When he plays a mana tide, it just gets shut down completely. Well, although, the... yes, exactly what yeah. I wanted to say. In this situation, I feel like you need to kill the spell spell damage. Well, to put it mildly, that's awkward because if you kill the war leader with fire elemental, you know that Megasaur can just shove you out of the game. If you use J Claws and Maelstrom Portal, you're kind of not doing all that much. So you're leaving yourself vulnerable to about a thousand things coming from Stan Sivka's side, but do you really have a choice if you're Sivka? And it looks like there's just none. There's just no choice. God. Okay, so there are two options here. Either Tarim or just Megazaw. But I feel like Megazaw is just too good, right? The thing is, if you if you finish it first, let's say, to attack into Manatide, right? Then you have a full board, so you have a way, you have to trade away one of your 1-1s. Your um, which, by the way, is perfectly fine, you know, I'm, I'm saying this like it's a problem, it's not. Um, but it does mean that you then have to, quote-unquote, waste some of the value that you're currently setting up. Mm -hmm. So... I still think it's... perfectly correct. JJ is gonna need a devolve next turn, man. If he's even alive to say uh, to speak of it. Well, he did use it on ten two. Sorry, ten three. So that was awkward. Let's see what he will hit from the adapt. Is it Wind Fury? Divine Shield. That's the perfect one. Anything but devolve is gonna mean that he gets to keep this basically. And JJ is on the devolve plan. Did he find it? That is not it. Is there well, anything? Ruined, I guess. He just got completely destroyed. Man. What Torn apart. Just no chance. And I remember when people were like reading the new cards from the expansion and, and everyone dismissed Gentle Megazor as an unplayable card. Everyone well, I knew. <laughs> <laughs> that card had this weird thing going on, going for it, where you were looking at it and thinking, we currently don't really have any good Murlocs to make this overpowered. And then Rockpool Hunter showed up, and I think people started taking Murlocs seriously. But at no point was there talk of Megasaur. Like even in the like the Rockpool Hunter Vile Fin deck with War with Tidecaller and everything, no one really looked at Megasaur and said, oh yeah, this is gonna be a staple and it's gonna be like a better Bloodlust sometime. No, just. No respect. Zero respect. Mm -hmm. I agree. Now let's see how this Purified Priest will pair against Purified Priest. Um, well, it's very simple, usually. I don't know if these guys run Shadow or Death. Um, I'm asking because some people are cutting those out of the deck, and that means that Essentially, it comes down to who has the first high health minion that ends up being inner fired, and you just win on the back of it. But it's also a subtle battle. Um, of sometimes like you're using stuff like Radiant Elemental to get ahead on board, and those are some of the most important cards early game. Because you would think Razor Leaf and um, you know Ancient Watchers are the most important, but if you don't have the supporting cards to make them work, they're not single-handedly like the best cards in your deck. You have to have the rest to go with it, and so you need card draw, uh, you need cheap spells. It's it's not as simple as just playing big silence stuff. And speaking of that, I mean, that coin pyro is making Stan Sivka hate life a little bit. Yeah, just a little bit. Hmm. Yeah, I'm a pretty big fan of a 3-8. I mean, a 4-8, sorry. Pretty good card. And then next turn into another 4-8. Seems like a decent play, I would say. Especially Problem for JJ, he's got nothing, man. He's just got complete <laughs> air. Well, he can just go for the power shields, and I feel like he has to in this situation. Can always go for the purify, but I feel like um, that's even worse because you need to keep it for your um, crucial minions. Wow, he just goes for pure value I, with no cycles. Interesting. I was gonna say your turn three is so bad that you might as well just keep the shields. 
Because if stuff like Ancient Watcher comes out, then you can always go like double shield into a trade or something. Um, like there's no guarantee that you run into exactly a humongous razor leaf. That's the worst case scenario. Hmm. And JJ knows that he's far behind. This is what the matchup comes down to. Who gets the biggest minion the earliest? And Stan Sifka has a supporting card for sure because you've seen him already. He played the Shadow Visions. You know he's got a silence. He's got a purify. He's got something to make that Razor Leaf active. And that is bad news. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the matchup. Holy moly. You might want to... Okay, so he's thinking of silencing later. I mean, it doesn't matter, right? Well, it doesn't matter, but I'm wondering... If there's ever a play that's not Silence Shambler, or, you know, Shambler Silence in whatever order you prefer. I don't think so. Well, you kill the Pyromancer anyway, and you are now in a position where every single Priest player would say, Oh my god, why do they have 4 attack, right? I mean, there's literally no way of killing those. Apart from dealing damage. And even, like, what is even more funny is that JG doesn't even have Shadowed Pains and Deaths in his hand currently, so it doesn't really matter uh, that those minions have four attack. They're just being a, a huge pain to deal with. And that's going to be a silence on an enemy Shambler, one of the best counterplay in the matchup, probably the only counterplay in the matchup. The only other bit of counterplay that exists is really the the times where you go inner fire on their, you know, 4-7, make it a 7-7, seven, seven, then death it. Mm -hmm. like, this is so fringe, but it happens, you know, reasonably often. Um... That's, you know, there's a little bit of, of counterplay in the matchup that exists, but it's kind of limited to inner fire and silence on Shamblers. Well, I was wondering if it's worth to just go for the card draw out of the collateral this time. But building up value, sorry, building up pressure with the second Razor Relief means that you have another, uh, another silence, so you just give away some information to your opponent. But I feel it's worth it to have the pressure already available for the next turn. Yeah, of you kind of need it. Because there's no Nova in the deck, right? Like, it's it's pretty well known. Like, the lists are kind of well known. So you don't expect to get Holy Nova and lose the 4-2 out of nowhere. So this these two minions you know are going to stick around. And that's yeah. that's the most important part. Oh man, that, uh, that Acolyte is kind of frustrating. <laughs> it's going to get two draws no matter what, it seems like. At this point, I think you just ignore it and put pressure on your opponent's face. Yeah, but you could die. <laughs> that's the that's the nightmare on of the matchup, six, is that... On turn 6, um, what is the maximum outcome when your opponent already played two shields? Oh, I think it's pretty much impossible. It would have to be Cabal Talon Priest into, you know, some... It would have to be some Radiant Elemental play, but with the shields gone, it's almost impossible. The yeah. worst scenario is that they buff the Acolytes so much that they kill your minions one at a time and you have no deaths. So you just lose the game on the back of that? Interesting that he did use this shield right now when he has Lyra for next turn. Well, that Lyra is not a bad card. But... I don't know how much... Like, the, the draws matter. What matters is really finding inner fire, I think. More so than anything. We're shambling, man. We're just shambling. Hmm. Feels bad, man. So he's looking at where to put the damage. I would clearly be tempted to put it into the highest health minion. You already have a 3-4 that makes this... Goodness gracious! Here we go. Do we do it this early, or do we get silenced often enough that we don't want to do that? That's the question to me. You could definitely wait before you pull the trigger on it. All right. Doesn't need it right now. I agree about that. I like the Lyra play. Especially, you know, probably they, they know exactly their deck lists. They keep each uh, they, they, they keep um, knowledge close, right? When it comes to JJ, Life Coach, Stansivka, all those guys play with each other. So Stansivka probably knows there's no way that he easily deals with the 4th routine and with the Lyra. So either that or the other. 
Hmm. What is Elaine's will? Well, Shadow Word Death is clearly a tempting thing here where you just Lyra into, into, sorry, Pain into the Lyra. So you get an extra card, you kill theirs, you force them to respond if they don't kill you instantly. But this is your tournament match on the line. So the question is, do you play too safe and go Cabal Town Priest into Shambler? Um, get yourself a 411 with Taunt. I mean, you can have two of those in quick succession. It's not, not necessarily the worst, but you're super weak to silence with that line of play. It's extremely weak to silence. Hell, you could even pick up Silence yourself from Lyra and then Silence off the buff on the Razor Maw. Hmm. Oddly enough, that that reduces damage intake by a good amount. It looks like we're gonna be playing the long term here. The biggest taunt we can. Unless Sif can just once wins the game this turn. Well you could just shadow visions into a win. There's another yeah, that's true. In there. There's a chance of that happening. Let's see. I I would start with it, right? There's no way you just play um free from amber here. I mean you could. They don't have answers to whatever comes out of it, but I I'll take the ins to win over anything else if you give me the choice. And you still have free from amber, they won't have an answer next turn anyway. And it looks like, you know, an unsilenced Ancient Watcher is not going to kill you either. So I would go for that Shadow Visions just about 100% of the time. I can't really think of a reason not to. Yep, yeah, let's go for the Shadow Vision. And there we go. That's going to be it. Heals the minion back up to 15. Didn't need to do so, but it's uh, a little bit cuter. Gets the OTK from 30 with the Humongous Razor Leaf. Welcome to Purified Priest, ladies and gents. This was a dreadful mirror match. For Super JJ didn't pick up anything despite the fact that he had a good removal for the Shambler early. Tried to stabilize, but the humongous razor leaves matter a ton, and he didn't have them. On well, this matchup, I I believe there's like um one of those really unique matchups where someone can actually win outright. Yeah, like it's just it's an OTK. It's probably the last of the OTK decks. I think so. Like, yeah. It's one of the few last ones. The other priests can also include those pieces, but as a deck that revolves around high damage output, you can actually play certain matchups in a way that you kill your opponent in one fell swoop, which is very different from what's left in Hearthstone. Anyway, guys, we'll be taking a short break. We'll be back after with Pavel versus Show. We have two control lineups coming up. Don't go anywhere, guys. We'll be right back.